Everybody, it's Tyler here at Sugar Rush. I'm so excited to talk to you. 5203G Gremlin. Uh, I got a chance to see them at Haunted, where they're absolutely dominant. They've been in an absolute tear ever since. Five event wins, four excellence awards, and they haven't lost a match since Haunted as well, too. So congratulations on all your success with that. Gremlin, absolutely phenomenal machine. We'll do a full teardown of this robot, talking about all the great features, capabilities, and functions. Uh, of course, talking about uh, the drivetrain area. Uh, I really like how they're uh, implementing their lift mechanism as well, too. A couple hangers as well with this robot. I can't wait to learn more. Let's talk about it here on Bits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Carson, we got to start off with the drive training robot. Talk to me about the composition of it, uh, and we got to take a look at the underbelly too. Yeah, so we have a 360 RPM drivetrain. Uh, we've been running this drivetrain all year. We ran it a lot last year. It's something our driver's really comfortable with, which plays a key role, but it also gives us a good balance between torque and uh, speed. And so we use 36 tooth gears to 60 tooth gears, and they're all running on 3.25 inch wheels. That really helps us vault the barrier very easily. We use these sleds, which we run on both sides of the robot. That way we can go over both ways, which is a little bit of a unique feature we have on our robot. You can see all of the motors are mounted inside the drivetrain. We have our battery also mounted inside the drivetrain, the tank. That helps us keep a really, really low center of gravity. And you'll see when we're driving around, we're very balanced. We don't uh, tip or jump that often. And that really helps a lot with our driving. I got to ask actually on, on your drive here, with your tank being down here, I noticed a couple like scuffs. That. Are you actually hitting that as you go over the bump? Because I almost think that almost maybe helps it smooth over or something too. So to safely jump over the barrier, our sleds, you can see how they're low in yeah. between the wheels. That helps us smoothly jump because it, it keeps the wheels on contact. Uh, we used to have a half cut right here. The reason why we removed it was because it helps us balance on the hang bar when we're balance hanging. And that was kind of an important thing. But for the most part, because we're blocking out the, the in-between dips in the drive, it helps make sure this is all safe, but also uh, help us drive over smoother. All right. Well, you can still eat it when you have to. Yes. Right? So very cool. How about your wings? Talk to me about those. So we have double wings, which is a bit of a unique feature. Uh, we started with just back wings, and the reason why we use drop-down back wings is because they're really strong. That way when they're pushing like 30, 35, 40 acorns at a time in skills, they don't really have much give as the flip-out wings do, and that really helps us. Uh, they're braced so that that helps even more all the way box through. We use spacers to make sure they are uh, boxed completely, and those we mainly use when we're match loading to touch the pole and also when we're pushing during skills. But one, the wings we've been using more recently are these front wings, and they are actually wedged. And wedging them really helps because we play a strategy where we love to push tri balls over the barrier, and being able to push them very easily with the wedge instead of using them individually with the intakes helps us get a lot over very quickly. I just got to comment what a gorgeous design this is overall, too. This is a very aesthetically uh, pleasing robot on there. And I, I love robots that aren't just functional, but also just look great as well, too. Uh, Connor, as we move on, let's talk about the uh, intake. Uh, and then uh, also you got a double hang as well, too. Let's talk about those. Yeah, so we have our intake. With it. We really focus on the actual mechanism used to grab the tri balls. We've tested different mechanisms with the uh, flex wheels and other types of things to grab the tri balls. We, we focused on the rubber bands because they uh, allow us to be able to conform to the shape of the tri ball very easily and be able to hold onto it tightly. Um, one thing to note is these plexi things on the side, they are uh, curved to help us go lift the intake up when we drive into the goal. And then it's angled down to slide over it. That way we can, these can pivot all the way up when we're pushing the tri balls in and we can use this brace in the middle right here to jam the dry, tri balls all the way into the goal really easily. From your uh, hanging mechanism as well too, you're going with a double thread on that. I'd love to hear about uh, not just what they are, but do you have any feature plans as well too for those as you look as this game starts to kind of evolve more and more? Yes, so we um, we have our, our main hang here in the middle. Um, so we made custom plexi get gussets for it to help it easily get onto the pole and then clamp down. We use four pneumatic pistons for that and some rubber bands. Um, that gets us to a B -tier, B tier hang. And then we also have this one on the side to help us balance hang. It just comes out really easily with one pneumatic piston. And so we can balance on the, on the barrier. Um, and then for the future, 
we want to be able to change the angle that these pistons in the back are mounted to. Right now, um, we, it's a very difficult to get it started. So we actually have to use the drive to push us up a little bit sure. when we're hanging. If we want to change the angle of those so that it has more uh, more pull down force when we're actually hanging to try to get a higher hang as well. Looking forward to that. Uh, Mackenzie, as we uh, wrap up on this robot here, talk to me about your uh, slapper mechanism, lift area, what's gone into that on your bot. You know, your match ones have been uh, just so efficient uh, throughout this whole thing. You're a top 30 skills team right now as we're filming it. I know you want to go for more, uh, but this robot overall has been absolutely phenomenal. Talk to me more about it. Yeah, so our slapper actually is a 40 RPM motor and it runs on, instead of banding, we've experimented a lot with different kind of banding for the pool. We're actually using latex tubing customized to the correct, uh, I guess, size that really works well with our shooter. We've done lots of testing for that throughout the year to really find the best launching. We also use mechanical advantage with the different lengths of our slapper. In the beginning of the year, we had a lot longer slapper on our sure. robot at Mall, and we've really honed in on the correct length for depending on our different robots and iterations as well. Um, we use this nice bumper on the top here that just kind of softens the bump to the tri ball to actually lower the momentum. Um, one thing that we've created actually very new on our robot, this uh, this robot is the match load tray. We call it the cowboy hat because it's right. kind of got that little shape Yeah, I love to it. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually used Vex trophies to mold it to the <laughs> okay. right size um, using a blowtorch. That was really fun to do. So we actually used a bunch of testing as well to get the correct um, position of the tri ball that we want to really make our grouping on the other side hit as much as accurately the same consistency as possible. You took a Vex trophy then put metal on, then blowtorch it on the Vex Trophy itself? Yeah, so we like took the blowtorch on the things. We had pliers, all three of us, we were like in using the blowtorch flames near our fingers and we were like <laughs> used it as a mold once it was like warm to bend it, to shape it to the right size because the Vex Trophy fit the tri -ball pretty well. Nice, very cool. Looking at overall 5203G, I mean, you've been performing so, so well. Uh, I just got to ask you as a wrap up here, any advice to teams who are looking at improving themselves? Like, what has been your number one? When you look at how you improve yourself through the season, what is maybe something you've learned from that that other teams could apply as well? I think one of the main things is that we focus really, really heavily on consistency and simplicity. Sure. And so that helps us nearly guarantee that we're not going to have anything break. We've built some more complex robots in the past, things with PTOs, ratchets, motor sharing, all that kind of stuff. But we found that Focusing on simplicity and really putting a lot of trust in our driver practice and in our programming practice has worked out all really well for us this season. Well, Gremlin, first off, congratulations. It's a phenomenal season so far. I can't wait to see how you do here at Sugar Rush as well, too. So make sure you turn this team, learn more about it, and good luck the rest of the season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.